Imran Khan, Prime Minister of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Volkan Bozkir, Distinguished Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank His Excellency President Aliyev of Azerbaijan, Chairman of the Non-Aligned Movement, for proposing this special session. The COVID-19 pandemic is the most serious global crisis since the Second World War. The virus has infected nearly 65 million people and killed, sadly, close to 1.5 million. And hopefully, whenever the vaccine is available, it must be offered to everyone. The pandemic has caused immense human suffering and the deepest global economic contraction since the Great Depression of 1930s. The poorest countries and the poor in all the countries are suffering the most. Nearly 100 million people in developing countries will fall back into extreme poverty. Rich countries have injected $13 trillion as fiscal t stimulus to revive the economies. On the other hand, developing countries just do not have the resources to afford such a massive economic stimulus. They are struggling to find even a fraction of the two to three trillion they require to recover from the pandemic. In Pakistan, we had a successful policy of smart lockdowns. Our efforts were aimed at uh, ensuring that not, in, not only do we save people from the virus, but also prevent them from dying from hunger. We provided relief package of around $8 billion, which was almost 3% of our GDP, to support the poor and to keep the economy afloat at the same time. And as I said, so far, our, our strategy has worked. But now we are confronted with a, a far more aggressive second wave of the virus. We are facing now the challenge of maintaining and reviving our economic growth, as well as uh, dealing with uh, increasing number of cases uh, which are occupying our hospital beds. The IMF managing director had advised countries to spend as much as it is required to stimulate growth. But like many developing countries, Pakistan has committed under our IMF program to reduce the budget deficit. And I'm sure other developing countries in our position are facing a similar dilemma. How do you stimulate the economy and yet at the same time reduce your budget deficit? The only way we can have the fiscal space to maintain and revive growth is through access to additional liquidity. Last April, I called for a global initiative on debt relief. We are grateful for the uh, debt suspension announced by G20 in May and its subsequent uh, extension till June next year. We also appreciate the rapid lending facilities activated by IMF and the World Bank. Yet the amounts generated so far are not even close to the needs of the developing countries to recover from the impact of the pandemic. As far as I know, five developing countries have already defaulted on their debt. And it seems others are about to follow. Several nations faced with large debt repayments and at the same time lost revenues are on the brink of economic collapse. There are disturbing reports from the World Food Programme of possible famines in some parts of the world. The financing for development discussions initiated by Secretary General and the Prime Minister of Canada and Jamaica have identified hundreds of options to, fin to financially support the developing countries. We hope that this process culminates in some concrete action soon. There is a need to reform the international financial architecture, build an inclusive and equitable 
debt management mechanism, construct a democratic, SDG-focused trading system, and install a fair international tax regime. If economic collapse is to be averted in a number of developing countries due to the COVID-19, the international community must identify and implement some key priority actions. I would like to propose a 10-point agenda for urgent action. One, debt suspension till the end of the pandemic for low-income and most stressed countries. Two, cancellation of debt of least developed countries. Three, restructuring of the public sector debt of other developing countries under an agreed, inclusive, multilateral framework. Four, a general allocation of special drawing rights of $500 billion. Five, expanded concessional financing to low-income countries through multilateral development banks. Six, creation of a new liquidity and sustainability facility, which should provide short-term loans at low costs. Seven, fulfillment of the 0.7% official development assistance commitments. Eight, mobilizing the required 1.5 trillion annual investment in sustainable infrastructure. Nine, achievement of the agreed target of mobilizing $100 billion per year for climate action in developing countries. And 10, immediate action to stop the massive illicit financial outflows from developing countries to, to uh, rich countries, to offshore tax havens. And at the same time, there should be an immediate re return of their assets stolen by corrupt politicians and criminals back to these countries. This one action, I assure you, Mr. President, this one action would benefit the poor countries more than all other measures put together. Excellencies, everyone agrees that there has to be a collective response to recover from the COVID crisis and at the same time achieve sustainable development goals and implement targets set by the Paris Agreements. Excellencies, the UN Charter's concept of collective security embraces collective economic security. Without economic security, conflicts and disputes will persist and proliferate across the world. Guided by the principles of this Charter, we must all work collectively for an inclusive, stable and sustainable economic, social and political order. I thank you.